Kirsten, make some noise, everybody. Woo! Please have a huge round of applause for everyone who's been on this stage so far this evening. Work for them. They have entertained you. I've done nothing so far. Uh, my name is Matt from England. I'm in Alaska now. The fuck is this? I, I like it. I mean, I've had fun so far. You guys are treating me well. This is my first time out of the 48. And. You're weird. <laughs> you're weird in a good way, but I like it, but you are, so you know you're strange, right? Everyone here is on the run from something. <laughs> or at least descended from someone who's on the run from something. This is, like, why else would anyone live here? Yeah, I've just noticed the moustache. Thank you, madam. That, uh... In case anyone's worried that I just insulted someone on the front row, she removed it with a giggle, like... <laughs> A lady on the front row sat there with a false moustache. Because why wouldn't you do that at a comedy show? Why wouldn't you bring your own comedic facial hair to the gig? <laughs> See how this one plays out? <laughs> Fuck are you people? <laughs> God, what is this place? It's, uh... Been here for four days. I found out now. I found out that T-Mobile doesn't work anywhere in the state. Doesn't exist in the state. I found that one out. Like I, I landed and I'm with T-Mobile and my phone wouldn't connect to it. And then eventually connected to AT&T. So I'm like, ah, sorted. And then half an hour later, I got a text saying you've used up all your data because apparently if you're in a different like country, <laughs> it goes like it's data roaming, and and you have it says you lose up your allowance, and my allowance is apparently 10 megabytes, which in case you're unfamiliar with how things work on the internet, is is about a nipple. <laughs> <laughs> so I phoned up T-Mobile. I was like, what's going on here? Why have I why have I run out of internet? And uh, and and they went, well, I, I mean, I, like I'm in Anchorage. It's in Alaska, but it's. Pretty big city. I mean, it's like a third of a million people. It's a fairly major town to not have internet uh, coverage by you guys. And you, you went, what's your postcode? What's the zip code where you are? And I went, well, I don't know, and I can't look it up because I don't have the internet. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's how these things work. <laughs> and, and he went, oh, well, then I don't know. And I, I got a bit creative. I looked around the apartment, uh, and I found this receipt from Walgreens, I was like, well, the Walgreens has to be nearish to here. So I went, look, here's the, here's the zip code for the Walgreens. And he looked it up on his computer, and he went, oh, yeah, we don't have coverage there. And I went, well, where in Anchorage do you have coverage? And he went, nowhere. <laughs> we don't have coverage in Alaska. So I said, well, why did you make me look up the zip code? <laughs> of the bit of the city that's in the state that you don't exist in. <laughs> like, I, it, it's like if I phoned up the fire brigade to say my car had explode, my car had exploded, and he went, what color's the steering wheel? Like, does it matter right now? I don't think we need that superfluous detail. And, thank you, sir. Uh, starting to, it's warm as well, apparently. That's what everyone's told me. I haven't noticed, but everyone's like, it's really warm here, which shows how skewed you guys are, because <laughs> it's pretty freaking cold today, but apparently it's a heat wave right now that you're in the middle of. <laughs> you guys are like, oh, I don't know how we're going to cope with this warmth. It's, it's almost hit 40 at one point this week. People are dying in the sweltering heat. <laughs> Like I've traveled America a lot. I'm familiar with places where it gets fairly cold. I was in up I was in northern Michigan in in February, which is unacceptable. As like it was negative. The temperature was negative. 
and my computer just said, oh, you're European, so I switched the units, and it was still negative, like there was no way to make it not be minus numbers. And I know you've all been in that weather on the regular, I hadn't. It's like every building you enter is like the world's least sexy striptease. Like ten minutes of taking off clothes, and at the end of it, you're still fully dressed. <laughs> It's a lie, of course, the world's least sexy striptease is amateur burlesque, but, uh... <laughs> I, I'm, envious, I'm just envious of the fact that women now get to do, like, dance classes and exercise classes that are basically slutty. I don't like that you get to do the slutty... You get pole dancing aerobics, which is... Like, if you're doing it, good for you, but at least admit you're being a bit slutty and getting fit in the process. Own it. Own what's happening there. I, I saw a group on offer come through my inbox the other week, and it was for pole ballet. <laughs> is, it, is it ballet that we're doing now? I wonder which classic story they're interpreting down at Cheetahs. <laughs> Let's, let's make sure we bring some extra money so we can get a private ballet in the champagne room. <laughs> like, just admit you're being slutty and getting fit in the process. I'm envious that women are doing that right now. No one's offering guys that. No one's offering me aerobic naughty fireman lessons. <laughs> And I get why, because male stripping's not very athletic. Like, from what I can tell, they do their working out before they get on stage. There's only really two moves in male stripping. There's the thrust and the dangle. <laughs> and you can't dangle yourself fit. You really can't. We... I've tried. We've all tried. Everyone's tried it, but... If you're doing a comedy piece, there's the tuck as well. But you gotta, you mix it up a little bit. <laughs> But I was like, how do you live in this weather? It's so cold. And this woman gave me the same answer that I think you'd give here in Alaska, which is, well, because it's beautiful. Look at what we have. We've got trees, we've got lakes, we've got mountains, we ski, we hike, we kayak. And there's just a few days in the winter when the government says, don't go outside or you'll die. <laughs> <laughs> and not even freak weather like a tornado, just normal how it is always this time of year weather. <laughs> Cause of death, air. <laughs> <laughs> I, I live in California now, we don't have any of that. We have earthquakes, that's the only thing we have in California. But you've got earthquakes too, you guys have earthquakes and the other stuff. <laughs> earthquakes, I've been through six earthquakes now in my time in California, and earthquakes Earthquakes have to be the only natural disaster where afterwards you have to check online to see if it's happened. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, was that a hurricane? I think I just felt a hurricane just then. Check on the internet to see if that was a hurricane, because... Like, I, I think I felt it. It might have been someone upstairs coughing, but I think that was a hurricane. So look, that church roof, ne that church roof never used to be in our kitchen. <laughs> was that a volcano? Did the volcano just happen? I think our volcano went off, because look at Tony, he used to move. <laughs> that's not how Tony normally is. Rrr, that's not what he normally looks like. Oh, Christ. <laughs> I'm... Here's the thing I've realized. I've been in Anchorage now for four days, and I mean, I've been doing comedy for quite a number of years, and I'm fairly proud of the bank of stories and jokes I've built up and want to share with you. But I'm very aware that you'd be just as entertained by watching a guy get drunk for two hours. <laughs> Because after the gig, like after every gig so far this week, you're like, all right, well that bit's done, now let's get you fucked up. Like that's what you guys seem to be, that's what you guys seem to be priding yourselves on. You're aware as well if like, like that will make the gig worse for you. Like that, that, like the more drink I have, the less able to actually do the thing that you've come to see. And you're like, now nah, we're going to see a different thing anyway, we're just as happy with that, so. <laughs> We're just as delighted by whatever happens and however it turns out. What is it? What have you even given me? Who who was responsible for this? Me. Hello. <laughs> oh, someone who actually works here. <laughs> Christ, what is it? Just drink it. Oh. Oh, what a Don't applaud for that. <laughs> I drank a beverage. 
three. <laughs> What's that? It's good for my kidneys. It's great. What was I talking about? <laughs> Do you I think I was talking about earthquakes. I think that's where we were at the time. We can talk about other stuff. What do you guys want to talk about? <laughs> What's that? Weathers and disasters and stuff. He needs... I don't think he needs that much more. I think he's good. Oh, God. No, I mean, uh... What's that? How about English women? I don't have any right now. Uh, I can tell you one thing about English women. They're a lot less impressed than American women are by an English accent. <laughs> There's a reason why I'm over here now. There's, uh, <laughs> there's advantages to traveling. <laughs> you know, and, and I like America as well. You know, you guys are all happy and smiley and polite. And no one's ever told you that before, have they? No one <laughs> has ever told you in the history of you being alive as Americans that you're polite people. And I love it. I love telling you guys that. Because you think we're the polite ones, and we are not. <laughs> We are mean-spirited, arrogant people, but we sound delightful. <laughs> That's why I stick over here. I go back to the UK like twice a year to see my friends and family and do a few more shows. But it's a long journey. It's a day to fly back to the UK. It's an entire day stuck in the same seat on the same plane with nothing to do but watch TV on demand uh, and eat and drink and nap. It's amazing. I love it. It's the best. <laughs> I know I'm in Alaska. That's what you guys got to do to get to anywhere in the 48, right? <laughs> it's a day doing nothing without any guilt. I love long distance flying. It's the best. There's nowhere else you can be. Your phone doesn't work. My computer runs out of battery after the first hour charge it because I'm an economy. We don't get trusted with electricity. <laughs> You're aware of that, right? You know now the expensive seats up the front have power outlets, but economy, well, we can't give the poor people electricity. <laughs> right, they'll probably start shaving each other. <laughs> Look at those disgusting creatures. We, we give them food, but none of it goes in their mouths. <laughs> They probably just smear it on their genitals and wave them out the window. <laughs> what they think is some kind of mating ritual. <laughs> you gotta treat yourself to laziness. I think that's the message. Every so often you treat yourself to laziness. You know like when you're in the... You know those times when you think, God, I should go to the supermarket. It's been a month. <laughs> but I'm gonna treat myself. I'm gonna go out to a restaurant. They'll have toilet paper. <laughs> If, if I do go shopping, it's late. Like, I go, I go grocery shopping. I go grocery shopping in the middle of the night. I, that's when I go. Like, I'll go to the convenience store at 2am when it's just me and drunks. Maybe a nurse. Maybe a drunk nurse. Which I love. They're the best. I love a drunk nurse. They're amazing. Not even for creepy reasons, just nurses have the best stories, and if they're drunk, they'll share. <laughs> you go drinking with a medic, they're discreet at the beginning, but then by the fifth one in, they're like, now nah, you have to understand. <laughs> it was a full-sized umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> so this happened to me. Two in the morning, I'm in this convenience store, and I've got a basket full of normal groceries. I've got like bread, milk, eggs, cereal, salad. I put it on the counter. I go to get a few more things, and when I come back, my basket's gone. So I'm trying to find the employee who's moved it, and then I see the most confused-looking drunk man leave with my stuff, like he bought my things. <laughs> like he just bought my basket of food and left. I don't even know if that's a crime. I don't... I don't think it can be, because who he paid for it, it belongs to the store, and he paid for the stuff, so it's his, but... I picked it. <laughs> like, I put all of the work in, then he just swoops in at the last minute to claim all the glory, like, like all Americans. <laughs> so 
drunk and so baffled from his perspective. You gotta see it from his side. From his perspective, that's like the world's most convenient convenience store. <laughs> like that's all he knows. He's staggered in there hammered, the guy's gone what he wants, and he's just gone this. <laughs> Thank you, that is service above and beyond any of your competitors, that is amazing. <laughs> and the next day he won't remember either. He's gonna, like he, I love that he's gonna wake up with healthy food in the house and no memory of how he did it. <laughs> like he went in there for cigarettes and chips, he's gonna wake up with a hangover and couscous. <laughs> you know, he's gonna think he's been useful drunk. You know useful drunk, that thing where you think to yourself, this one nods the rest of you. Useful drunk is that thing where you think to yourself, I'm hammered, so everything's fun. So I might as well do some chores. <laughs> it's a tip for life. If you don't already do it, please, then, like if you take nothing else from my part of this show, take this bit of advice, life tip. You do all the jobs you hate the most when you care the least. You wake up the next morning, all your bathroom tiles are clean. <laughs> but you vomited in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> you, you vacuum the entire house and kill the man. <laughs> <laughs> but he still made me look like a bit of a dick. I can't be mad at him, but I'm still a little bit cross because he still made me look stupid. Because like, I had to go back around that store. And I had to select all the same things and then go back to the same guy behind the same counter and he's scanning the same products through and he's looking at me and the basket and the door and back at me. Because it looks like I'm copying the drunk guy. <laughs> like I've never done this before. I don't know how things work in America, so I'm just gonna copy you, if that's all right. That's, you look like you've got the right idea about life, the way a bit of sick is coming down the side of your mouth. Like I'm gonna follow you in your life plan. Just when I think I've got America sorted, I don't. Like there's still, there's constant surprises. Had my first baby shower the other week. Did you even know that didn't happen in other countries? <laughs> no, that's an American thing, the baby shower. That's like, you all know what I'm talking about, right? The baby shower, the thing where the woman gives birth on you. <laughs> and it wasn't my thing, I wasn't into it, but you gotta try everything once just to try it. You've just gotta see whether it's, you don't know until you try it. That is gross, you're correct. <laughs> Stupid joke. Uh, I moved apartments as well. That was my other new finding. Here's the thing. I'm about to talk about something, and it's going to be the most normal thing in the world to you. You have to realize it was weird to me. Because I moved apartments back home in California, and I don't think you realize that when you rent somewhere in Britain, it comes furnished. That's the deal. If you're renting, you rent furnished apartments. And for six years in America, I was subletting from a friend, so that was furnished. And I didn't realize that normally in the US, when you rent somewhere, they just give you the empty shell of a building <laughs> and trust you to be an adult. <laughs> like, be a grown up in there, make a house happen, know how these things work. I had no idea. I bought a bed for the first time in my life, in my 30s. I'd never bought a bed before, and I know, again, everyone in this room already has. I'm aware of this. I'm the weird one here. You all think it's perfectly normal. You all think there's nothing weird about the process, nothing at all strange about going to a store and pretending to sleep in front of a man. <laughs> Because that's what happens when you buy a bed, right? You go to a series of stores and a series of men give you advice on how to lie down and close your eyes. <laughs> and I went to six in a row and they were all jocks. They were all kind of bros. I think they were overcompensating for the fact they sell pillows. <laughs> They were all like, yeah man, what are you? Like, your front sleeper brother, your side sleeper, get in there, give it something. <laughs> like, what, what, one of them kept using the word marinate. <laughs> that's not the right word. Like, that's, that's definitely the wrong word for that situation. He's like, just try that mattress, just let that marinate for a while, just see how it feels. That's, 
That's wrong. That is not the right word for that. Like, marinate means juices and absorption. <laughs> That's not a mattress verb. That is not a bed word. That's not a new mattress verb, anyway. That, that might be an old mattress verb. That might be the reason you need a new mattress. There. There's been too much marinating in this one, so I'm going to need a new one. Yeah. Do you have any less marinated mattresses? Because that one has been over-marinated. So if anything, if you could just find me one that's a little bit fresher, because... <laughs> and then there comes the point in the bedline process, and I know you've all done this, and I hadn't. I didn't realize what it involved. But you've got to wait until the guys walked away a bit. And you've tried out what the bed would be like to sleep on. But that's not the only thing you do on a mattress. So you have to kind of, but not really, but kind of, fuck the bed. <laughs> like, you can't fully go at it. You can't be, like, slapping it and stuff in the middle of the store. But you, like, you've got to, you've, you've got to try because you don't know. You've got to give it, like, a little bit of a go. You just, like, because otherwise hotel and it had these memory foam mattresses that was their big selling point but I was with someone and there was no bounce right you just sink in and the more you move the more you sink it's like quicksand struggling to the worst that you could do any motion you just disappear further and further into it you, you, you just gotta lie out as still as flat as you can and wait for a fireman to rescue you when you're with someone that's embarrassing and the mattress is going to remember it. <laughs> so you you got to try you got to try it out. You got to and he knows what you're doing. The sales guy knows what you're doing. He sees it. He sees it every day, but he can't say like, "Yeah, yeah, it's good to fuck on." He, he can't cuz he's a professional. He can't say that. So he goes like, "Yeah, that's got a good spring on it, that bed." And you're like and you're like, "Yeah, that'll be a good That'll be good to sit on. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, that's a good sitting mattress, that one is. <laughs> that was one of the better sitting mattresses we stock. <laughs> like, no one's being up front in the store. No one's talking at face value. Everyone's being like... Like, like, here's the other thing. All of these mattresses now, they all get sold because they have memory foam or latex foam or gel-cooled memory foam. They all got sold with, like, these mattress protectors. And that they all the sales guys have the same speech. They're like, yeah, this protector, it's uh, it's, uh keeps the warranty in place, and it's breathable, but a hundred percent waterproof. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, really? <laughs> waterproof? You say? <laughs> yeah. So if my like, no one's being upfront. No one's saying the real words. Like I'm like so. So if I were to spill some coffee <laughs> on the mattress, he's like, yeah, you could spill as much coffee <laughs> as you like. Doesn't matter how much coffee you spill on that, none of that coffee is going to stain the mattress and invalidate the warranty. Like, it's so silly. We're both adults in the store. I'm saying coffee, he's saying coffee. We both mean blood and piss. <laughs> We know that, everyone knows that, but we can't say it because it's a place of business. Like, there's etiquette involved. It's, like, I don't even drink coffee, I'm English. But <laughs> like, tea sounded weird, tea felt weird to say in that situation. So we're in this store, I'm like, so if my girlfriend were having her coffee time, <laughs> Could we still pour tea on each other? <laughs> like, I don't know how to say this. I don't know how to express this. <laughs> so stupid. 
Not yet. <laughs> That'll be nearer the end of the gig. Alright, thank you whoever that was, but that will be later. Thank you. We've got about 20 minutes left for me to actually stay sober on this stage, and then that can go. Uh, I didn't, I haven't eaten yet this evening. And as much as you probably think that you want the gig to finish with me just rocking backwards and forwards in a half-naked huddle in the corner of the stage, how was the show? Well, he did jokes and stories for the first 20, 25 minutes, and then, and then he just cried for a bit. And then he sang a song about sailors, and we don't, we weren't into that. And, and then he asked who else wanted to have a go, so... And we weren't sure whether he meant to have a go, like, doing comedy or just have a go on him, but either way... <laughs> oh man. I can't remember now either which of the opening acts... Uh, I can't remember which of the opening acts um, talked about the Boston Marathon guy, but that was a... Uh... Oh, was that not? That wasn't tonight. <laughs> Now I remember now, it was the tornado. That was the other horrendous thing that happened in the news this week. <laughs> and at the time I was like, well, what else is anyone going to talk about tonight to cheer up the mood? <laughs> I'll talk about the Boston guy. So, uh, <laughs> no, because here's what happened. Um, uh, I, uh, when that Boston, when the Boston bombing happened, like the guy's just been convicted. He, you know, he's just been found guilty. Um, I don't want to make this all about me, but I'm on stage and there's lights and a um, microphone, so fuck it. We've already <laughs> established the ego. Here's what. Here's my connection to it. Two days after the Boston bombings, um, when they still hadn't caught anyone for it, I landed in Boston to do three days of gigs, and I was just wandering around the city, just trying to not look foreign. Because <laughs> it was a tense time, and I've got a face that gets mistaken for a lot of different nationalities. I was being the most English I've ever been in my life. <laughs> like, I know English is a type of foreign, but apparently it's one of the good ones. Like, I was just <laughs> walking through Boston like, Hello, how are you? <laughs> what a marvelous day it is in Boston! <laughs> New England, I'm from the old one, good times! <laughs> He was a Chechen. Like Chechen did it. Who saw that one coming? Who saw who saw it being someone from Chechnya? You know what they say about Chechens? No. No, nor do I. No one knows anything. <laughs> no one knows anything about Chechens. The only thing I know about Chechens is there are Chechen rebels. All I know about Chechens is when they're on the news, it's never a fun story. <laughs> it's never a good story when there's Chechens on the news. It's never like the, the cute bit at the end of the news. Like, and in Chechnya, a cat's learned to skateboard. <laughs> oh, how adorable from Chechnya. It's always pain and misery. Poor Chechens! Jeez, when that story came out, when it turned out to be Chechens, they must have felt how I felt as a Jew when they caught Bernie Madoff. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the biggest financial scammer in history, the biggest Ponzi scheme of all time. And I was watching it on the news going like, who's going to be behind it? Is it a six foot Aryan? <laughs> oh no, it's Shylock the Gnome. <laughs> Did you see Bernie Madoff on the news? He was like a Nazi's drawing of a Jew. Like that's how much of a Jewish caricature he is. <laughs> like, hey, money, money, money. Like he was just like the most, like he was like a 1940s German cartoon. Like that's how that's what he looked like. But God, at least at least we know they're Chechens. Like, at least we know who did it. Because at first, at first, when it first came out, all we knew was that they were cowards. Because that's what they say. When anything like that, when there's ever, ever any kind of terrorist attack, the first thing they say is, these people are cowards. That's what the news says. That's what the commentators, that's what the politicians, that's what the president said. Obama stood on the news the day the bombing happened and he called the perpetrators cowards. And they're not cowards. They're not. 
They're assholes. <laughs> right? They're shit, they're pricks, they're reprehensible scum. That's not cowardice. No politician is ever honest when something like that happens. Here's what I want to see. Next time any kind of shooting or bombing or anything like that happens, I want the president to stand there in front of the White House on the lawn with a flag and the eagle, <laughs> the podium, and go, listen, we do not know who did this yet. But what we do know for sure <laughs> is that they're cunts. <laughs> Like, only a cunt could have done something this cunty. Like, this is... We've, we've got the top FBI profiler as well. He's like, yeah, this is the top... This is one of the cuntiest things we've seen in many years. So we're looking for a cunt right now. If you know a cunt, if there's a cunt in your area, please phone this number and report that cunt, because we need to stop this. But... But that's not a coward, you know? That's not a coward. The coward is the person who thinks about planting the bomb and then goes, ah, I might get caught, right? That's a coward. <laughs> we need more cowards. The world would be a better and safer place if there were more cowards. Right? Like, I've never murdered anyone. I'm not brave. <laughs> Doesn't make me brave as a person. Like, and I'm not brave. I'm not a brave man. Like, on more than one occasion, I've been on the top of a diving board and taken the stairs back down. Which, by the way, that is a lonely journey. If any of you ever done that, that's a lonely journey. There's no way to front that out. There's no way to play that one off. Like, oh, I just left my diving gloves on the bottom. I'm going to go down and get my diving gloves. And I'll be back later. Because I, I hit the water very hard. I'm a very aggressive diver, so I'm going to need my diving gloves at this one. I kind of figured if there's ever a gig, sometimes people are sensitive to that bit of material or that kind of humour. kind of figured a fuck up bar in Anchorage is going to be alright with that. And, and I mean fuck up bar as an absolute compliment. Don't be thinking that was in any way negative. I like, you know, I like child, I like touring. I like finding out what there's stuff to do. I like find, I like going to places and finding what there is to do and do it. That's one of the joys of this job. I was in Toledo a month and a half ago, and I said, "What is there to do in Toledo?" And they laughed. <laughs> Toledo, Ohio, they laughed, and I was like, "There must be something." A little bit of murmur happened between, around the crowd, and then one person went, "Well." Taco Bell tests out new recipe items on us. <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone was like, yeah, that is something that we do. That's our... And I said, well, do you try their new items? And they went, well, it would be rude not to. <laughs> <laughs> Which I love. They took it as a genuine point of pride. They're like, anything you have eaten from Taco Bell has come through us. <laughs> Toledo. You like the Doritos Locos? Well, you have Toledo to thank for that. <laughs> They're standing there in judgment like a Roman emperor. <laughs> Bring me the new burrito. <laughs> no. <laughs> the new the country shall not have this. <laughs> Cause otherwise you do like I like that Anchorage actually has shit to do. Obviously you get drunk and you party, but there's other stuff during the daytime and I like that. I I spent more than a more than Three weeks, three different weeks I've spent in Sunnyvale, California, which is in the middle of Silicon Valley, which is a lot less interesting than it sounds. Like Silicon Valley, <laughs> like to me, that says like robots and other things. <laughs> and it isn't, like it's just where Google is near. <laughs> so we did what any of you would do, we got drunk, and this one night we're staggering back to the hotel, and there's a jack-in-the-box fast food place next to the hotel. <laughs> See, that's a beautiful thing. I'm out of the 48 now. You're just like, Jack in the Box, tell me more about this. <laughs> no, fuck that, fuck that. One of the best things about coming here is that there are that many 
bullshit chain stores yet. Like, there's a few creeping in, but like, I like that I've so far not eaten in a single, like, in everywhere in the country restaurant. Like, I, and yeah, sometimes the food's not great. <laughs> and sometimes it is, and the wait staff are weird, and there's far too many dead animals on the wall. Like, there's far, pretty much everywhere I've eaten. Like, I think, I, I, I had breakfast in Gwinnies yesterday, and... I'm pretty sure they cover cracks in the walls with animals. Like, I think that's what they do. They're like, oh, some kid's got his handprint all over the paintwork, so someone get out there and shoot another mammal, because we're going to need... We're going to need something to cover this. So we're staggering back to the hotel, and there's a jack-in-the-box next to it, and there's a big neon sign flashing that says, open 24 hours. And I checked my watch, it was about 1.30, 2 o'clock, which is well within the 24-hour time period. <laughs> but front door's locked. So I'm trying to find an entrance, because there's still like some light on inside, and I realized the drive through that's what's open. So I went up to the guy in the drive through window, and I asked him for some fries, that's all I wanted. And he wouldn't serve me because I wasn't in a car. <laughs> and your reaction annoys me. Because <laughs> I want that to be the bit in the story where you're like, shit, no way, that's bullshit. And all of you just then are like, yeah, that's the rule. <laughs> like, every one of you knew, right? Yeah, you're not going to get served without a car. I mean, like, <laughs> that's the deal. The dress code for fast food after midnight is a vehicle. <laughs> wearing a car to enter the premises. Which is ridiculous, because who wants that kind of food at two in the morning and is in any position to be driving? <laughs> Who's that for? They're just encouraging drunks and stoners to get behind the wheel. Like, come Mr. Stumbly, come Wobbly Joe, come stumble, stumble our fine wares. Whoa, 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 don't walk. <laughs> You're drunk. <laughs> You could trip and hurt yourself. <laughs> no, you, sir, should get into a half-ton metal box and plow towards us at 50 miles an hour. <laughs> can that box be full of a flammable liquid? Why, yes, it can! <laughs> I insist on it, in fact. <laughs> so, so we were arguing with the guy in the window, and I feel like a dick for that. I do feel like a dick for that, because generally, when you're arguing with that guy, like, it's not like he made the rules. It's not like he could change the rules. It's not, not like the president of Jack in the Box is working the night shift in Sunnyvale. <laughs> if I felt like, you know when you argue with someone in a call center? And you might feel good at the time, but deep down you feel like a bit of a dick. Because you know that no matter how much you hate the company, no matter how much that organization might have screwed you over, the person working the phones hates that company more. Because <laughs> at least they haven't employed you in a call center for 12 hours a day, no natural lighting. You're like, my TV is still not working. They're like, mate, I've got no vitamin D. <laughs> I've got rickets, my skin's paper thin, my hair's falling out. <laughs> Fuck you and your pay-per-view. <laughs> You really want to watch the game? Go and watch in a bar. At least you can leave your building. <laughs> if you do go outside, could you just describe the sun? <laughs> the birds still sing. <laughs> Tell my family I love them. <laughs> so, so we were arguing with the guy in the window. I feel bad for it, but that's what happened. That was me drunk and a bit ashamed. And then this car pulls up. And at first we're looking at him like, oh, look at you with your car. <laughs> Mr. Drivey Big Shot. <laughs> but you gotta realize I'm drunk. So I've lost a certain amount of my inhibitions. <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> so I find myself staggering up to the window, leaning in, like essentially soliciting for fries. Like that's what I'm doing. Hey, big boy. I got a hole that needs.
needs filling. <laughs> when an embarrassing story gets a little bit more embarrassing, he recognized me. Like, he'd seen me on Last Comic Standing and he knew who I was. So now he has that story. Now he gets to tell people, you know the little English guy from Last Comic Standing? Not really. Well, it doesn't matter. Anyway. <laughs> and Jack in the box and he just staggered up to me <laughs> begging me to buy him food. Man, guess that's what happens when you don't win a reality show. <laughs> but I've been thinking about it a lot. I've been thinking about it since it happened because I want to know what counts as a legitimate vehicle for the drive through Because I know you can do motorbikes as well as cars. So what about a bicycle? You're saying yes. I've heard no from other people. I'm going to tell you that right now. What about what about one of those toy pedal cars for kids? Just pedal that one through and go, what? It's a car. It clearly says so on the box it came in. Or what if what if you just go to a junkyard and just get a car door and walk through holding it, just wind down the window. Fries, my good man. <laughs> and for my lady friend, she's just got a mirror doing her makeup. <laughs> How much of the card do you need before it counts? <laughs> I've asked around a lot. I'd be interested to know what anyone's got away with in, in Alaska. Actually, has anyone gone through one in a snowmobile or anything like that? Ah, oh, damn it. Because I've been collecting stories. I've been collecting stories as I've traveled around the country. Um, in North Carolina, a horse. Successful. Um, in Portland, Oregon, a group of college kids got served because they were collectively heavy enough to set off the pressure sensor. So they thought there was a car there. And then they made engine noises into the microphone. <laughs> My favorite story, my favorite, favorite story came from Minneapolis. Because I talked about this during the show, I talked about what had happened. And this couple came up to me afterwards and they told me their story. It had been their wedding night. And the whole night they'd not eaten anything because they'd been too busy being host and hostess. So they went outside hungry. But right next to where they were having the party, was it, it was a jack-in-the-box it was even the same like it was the same chain like the same like the story is almost exactly the same as mine front door locked drive through open the only thing that's different is unlike in my story she was dressed as a bride and he was dressed as a groom whereas i was just dressed as the bride <laughs> they wouldn't serve them and they're like, could you not make an exception? It's obvious what day it is. And they're like, I'm sorry, it's health and safety. You know, you could get hit by a car. And they're like, what, a car that wouldn't notice a bride and groom? 